Welcome to the Untitled Game Show Top Games of 2013. Yo, let's jam. Three, two, one, let's jam. Here we go, Need for Speed Rival hits number 10. This game embodies what I love the most about racing games, the sense of speed. You get in your car either online or offline and you're out. It feels right, it feels great, this game deserves number 10. Three, two, one, let's jam. Next up we got DMC Devil May Cry. This game, if you have not played it yet, is a must play if you love action games. The combo systems, the melee system, everything about this game from the ranged weapons to the melee weapons, everything just feels absolutely excellent. From the story as well, to the DLC even was done well. Need for Speed and this game deserve their 10 and 9 spot on my list of top games of the year. Three, two, one, it's Next up is the one and only Pokemon X and Y. This game brings back Pokemon to the true form for fans like me of the first generation. Bringing back characters like Charizard, Bulbasaur, Blastoise all back in the game to do their thing. Especially now that they have their Mega Evolution, this new Pokemon has taken Pokemon to a whole new level for a new generation of fans and for the classic fans. This game, me and four other friends all got the game the same time. We've been playing it together. I absolutely love it and it deserves a spot at number 8 on my top 10 list of 2013. Three, two, one, let's check. This one is short, simple, and sweet. I have over 200 videos of this game in battles with my real friends all together playing on one TV. This deserves a spot on my list. Three, two, one, let's check. It's a big old slime monster. Does not look happy to see me. As I just mentioned in that clip, Soul Sacrifice is filled with monsters who are just not happy to see you. But don't be all cocky about it because you yourself just might turn into a monster one day if you do the wrong choices. Soul Sacrifice has one of the best stories I've ever played for a handheld game ever. And this year in 2013, it deserves a spot on my list ahead of games like even Pokemon. Three, two, one, it's jam. Never. Yes, never again should God of War go without awesome single player and multiplayer just like this clip. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's slice him up a little. Execution. Three, two, one, it's jam. Yes, we all know how great Last of Us single player mode can be, but many people never got a chance to experience a great multiplayer mode. I liked it enough to even do clips just like this. Check it out. The semi-automatic rifle is the first primary weapon you will have access to online. It's well balanced for both firepower and for range. The rifle works great at both long distance and close range battles. Just like the burst rifle, the semi-automatic rifle can be silenced to make your shots not show up on the mini-map. So go ahead, silence your weapon, and get them good shots. The best way to use a semi-automatic rifle is slow and steady. Shooting too fast will make for a bad recoil experience and just throw off your aim. That's always bad, so make sure you take your time, and even if an enemy goes ahead and sneaks up on you, go ahead for those headshots. We're going to be looking at some scenarios right here. First, mark your enemies if you have the chance. This is always good. Take your time, stay in hiding take good shots, upgrade your weapon right after that to get the best out of it, alright guys? But remember, even if you're going to do everything slow, you still could be aggressive in the Last of Us multiplayer mode. Let's look at some aggressive situations right now. If you have the general idea where your enemy is, throw a bomb. This could get them in the open and you could take a clear shot, just like what's about to happen right here. After killing the enemy, go ahead and pick up your parts. Always get your supplies. You need these to build up your clan. But after killing the enemy, always get right into cover. This is important because the enemy knows where their teammate died. Three, two, one, let's jam. Why you closed it on me? <laughs> also, multiplayer moments just like this and the single player being a pirate is why Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag has made it on my list of the top 10 games I've played this year. As well, I own this game on both the PlayStation 4 and the PC. I would not have it on two platforms if it wasn't a game I really enjoyed. Moments like this when I could play with my friends and we get together and challenge each other just to beat each other in the match and defend the artifact is what makes this game so great along with being a pirate in the single player. Dead. 
it's just so much fun to be able to get a group of friends together, jump into a multiplayer match, and then next thing you know, jump into a single player and just be a pirate. Three, two, one, it's jam. And next up is what's going to be many people's game of the year. For me, it's only in second. Here's what I think from my GTA 5 review. Grand Theft Auto 5 can be a cinematic and dramatic game. The game starts off with players in the middle of an intense bank robbery. <laughs> but, as we all know, in the open world sandbox that is a Grand Theft Auto game, the story can be whatever we make of the experience. Once you get into the open world gameplay, you could do whatever it is you like to do from the game's activities, if that is trading on the stock market to make some money, running from cops and gangbangers, racing off-road ATVs, trucks and bikes, flying planes, boats, and even a submarine. In this new GTA, there's no shortage of vehicles to play with, pimp out, customize, and have fun with. If you like a little more excitement, you always could grab a plane, parachute out, land on the Lyris Mountain, and then go hunting for some wildlife. Just be careful, the wildlife could hunt you too. If those activities are too much for you, you could always go to the movie theater to watch a show or take a break and do some yoga. We have to do something. What do you propose we do? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> I see you're awake now. Hey there. <laughs> there are better places to take a nap than on the ground, you know. <laughs> Give me your hand. Yes, give me your hand. Let me take you on an adventure, the Fire Emblem Awakened adventure. This game is not only the best game I've played in 2013, but it's one of the best games I've ever played in my life. Not for just RPGs and gaming all together. This game features expansive relationships. You actually feel like you're growing with the character you play with and your party around you. You're able to build these relationships even to the point where you can actually have kids and they could grow strong together and their kids could grow strong together as well. The party system, the difficulty, every aspect about this game was executed perfectly from the cutscenes to the gameplay. Everything about this game is absolutely lovely. I put well over hundreds of hours into Fire Emblem Awaken Love the co-op mode, love absolutely everything about this game, and for that, this game deserves my number one game of 2013. If you haven't played it yet, definitely pick it up. It doesn't matter if you have an Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PS3, or PC. If you have access to a 3DS, you definitely need to grab this game and play it immediately. This game is a blast, and it's a must-play game of 2013 if you haven't done it. I know this is not going to be everybody's game of the year, so please share your game of the year list in the comments below or make your own YouTube videos and share it with me because I'll definitely check it out, guys. Thanks for watching. This is B with TheUntileGameShow.com. I'll be back with more game of the year type videos real soon, like my worst games of the year. I played some pretty bad stuff out there, guys, and I'm going to share that with you as well. Back with more videos soon. Peace out, guys. Like and subscribe.